Well, my name's Ted. I'm a, uh, a New Zealand firearms collector specialising in infantry small arms from the Second World War. Now, this is something I don't ordinarily do, but I'm going to give a shout out to uh, a young guy that has a channel up on, on YouTube. Uh, his name is Marshall Zhukov, and he's been very, very helpful to me, giving me information about the Soviet family of weapons uh, as used uh, in the Second World War, particularly the, uh, the Mosin Nagant family. So this is a shout out and a plug, Marshal Zhukov. Uh, any information that you want, assistance that you want, uh, video requests, etc., dealing with Soviet weapons, particularly and specifically the Mosin Nagant family, uh, he's the guy to go to. Hello, this is Marshal Zhukov, and here we are together again on YouTube. Here we've got a another Mosin Nagant. This is a 9130, made in 1943 at the Tula Arsenal. Doesn't look like they struck the arrow inside of the star very well. But more importantly here, we can kind of see in the jumbled marks that are here on the very front part of the barrel shank, we can partially see what appears to be an H. That actually is a Russian N, and to the left we can see a C. This is Tula's way of stamping their sniper rifles. So this is actually an X sniper. We can see a little bit here where the holes were welded over and ground off and we'll be able to see actually a lot better inside the receiver. So we can see on the inside of the receiver here right here is a hole that it looks like they um, put a screw in it and welded over the screw and then ground off from the outside of the receiver wall. And there's another one. So it's looking pretty well lathered up here in Cosmoly and this is one of the so far, I haven't looked under the stock kit, but it looks like there's quite a bit. The bolt's pretty well uh, soaked in it, too. So I'll get it taken apart and cleaned up, and then uh, we'll do a little quick comparison of the Izhevsk X sniper that I have with this X sniper. So it took just a couple minutes to get her apart here. And uh, the underside is not too bad, actually. You can kind of see where they went over with, uh, it looks like some kind of a paint uh, to finish the outside. Or well, it could be bluing, I suppose, but it just looks like a rubbed-on paint. You can see the uh, transition from color right there just a little bit. But uh, we can see where they ground over also. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove these parts. These are really easy to take off. Unscrew this, and then you might even be able to do it one-handed. You've got to kind of push on the spring a little bit and remove it at the same time, as well as your uh, interrupter. And then one thing you want to watch out for when you take these apart, sometimes these pins, as we can see this one looks pretty loose. It's held in place in the stock, so it's not going to come out when it's in the stock, but sometimes they could... Uh, fall out if they're really loose so just keep an eye out for that so you don't lose it and one other problem I had the front sight just basically fell out of its mount there that'll be an easy fix I'm not worried about that and I can show you guys how to do that too this is what you want to use to clean all the cosmoline off one of these things this one's pretty pretty clean actually so I don't have to do a lot of wiping off of any real caked on or thick stuff. If you got real caked on or real thick stuff, some of the paper paper towels are what you want to use. So paper towels like these or newspaper or whatever else kind of paper is handy and just try to wipe as much of it off as you can. It's a lot less messy that way. Um, and then you want to use a toothbrush. I just dump a little in a little cup and then wipe her down and then wipe it off and it's all good to go after that. Same thing with the stock. Give the stock either a good rub down or you can use the toothbrush on the stock too. 
So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hit the edge of this sight base with this punch and I'll do it on both sides and basically you're looking to mar the side of that. It's hopefully if it goes well it'll put a nice dimple the shape of the punch right in there and then when we reinstall it on the groove on the uh, front of the barrel it should help to hold it in place. Boring this rifle just looks great. Right, this is the Ijevskek sniper and you can see here where they filled the holes but this is the old scope number that used to be on it. Ijevsk, this is typically what they did is they matched the scope and the rifle. Now the Tula as we saw had the C and the N in Russian and they would also have the C and the P in Russian designating it a sniper. Now we can see looking at both of these this is the counterboard rifle right here this one is not counterboard and one way you can tell is just by sight you can see the hole on the left looks bigger than the hole on the right however if you don't have a trained eye then you may need a dummy round in a counterboard rifle this is typically what will happen it will swallow the bullet and the case right up to the shoulder of the case on a non counterboard rifle we can see the bullet stops right there or somewhere thereabouts between a quarter or eighth of an inch something like that and uh, you probably will still have a good shootable so I'll take my cleaning rod stick it down in here and you can feel where it stops that's how far down the barrel is counterboard so probable reasons for counterboring could have been improper cleaning with a steel cleaning rod not using the muzzle protector and it rubbed up against the inside of the crown that's one one way it could have been damaged or just possibly used and it was drilled out where there was good rifle.